What's up guys, my name's Anton Suarez, and welcome to part 3 of the Gen 2 installation guide. Now in this part, we are going to be finalizing our installation with the Grub 2 bootloader. Now, this is a very crucial step because this is what's going to let us boot into our system after we leave the environment of the live CD. So this is very important, very, very important. And this is a very crucial step. If you haven't been looking at the handbook and you've had success since then, I'd recommend looking at the handbook now because depending on your motherboard, if you're running in VirtualBox, then you don't have to worry about UEFI. But if you're running in like a actual system, most likely if you're, it's a newer system, you have UEFI and you have to figure that out. For me, this is VirtualBox, so it's very easy for this to, to work, I guess. So we're going to emerge, ask, SYS, dash boot slash grub two. Yes. So this is going to emerge the grub two bootloader. It's gonna take a little bit. It will take a little bit. Like many other packages you are gonna be emerging, again based on your system itself, RAM, internet speeds, things like that. It's everything's building from source. So if you have if you have a, a lower end CPU or lower end RAM or older RAM, it is going to take a little longer. Now, after this step, I am going to show you guys a trick to help emerging go a lot faster. And it shoots off emerging from the actual uh, hard drive space to RAM. And it's a very cool trick I found. Now, most likely, I'm going to be going with the Cinnamon desktop. And I'm going to explain why. Because gen the GNOME desktop is very difficult to do it without SystemD. The system does not have SystemD. It uses OpenRC as its kind of system utilities and system service tool. The back end of Linux right now is not using systemd. And um, you could set it to use systemd like we did before with eSelect. If you wanted to do that, you could, but it takes a long time to emerge. So we did it for saving time. But technically, you could do anything you want. You could use any of these back end service systems system, uh, systemd, OpenRC. There's a, t there's a couple others as well that other distributions use. So Grub just finished emerging, and now we're on to the next step, which is configuring Grub. And it's very easy to configure Grub. We'll clear this out. We'll do Grub 2-install. My accent changed there. Don't worry about it. Slash SDA. Cool. Installation finished. No error reported. Great. Here's a very important step. To generate the Grub 2 configuration files, uh, this is a very important step, and we're going to be very soon reboot rebooting to our installation. So grub2 dash mk config config dash o slash boot slash grub grub dot dash config grub2 dash mk config dash o there we go so we'll press that awesome so now we're done here I believe we're at the point where we can reboot yeah pretty much so we have really hit the point where we're going to be rebooting into the system and we're going to begin to set up a lot of different things. So let's exit. We're going to CD. We're going to umount dash L slash MNT slash Gen2. Good. We're going to do that for slash dev as well. Okay. We're just going to check if things are have been unmounted. That in, So unmount dash L slash dev. Let's do PROC. Yep. That has to be unmounted. SYS, that was never mounted, okay, and let's do slash boot, alright, cool, so that's pretty much it, uh, just trying to check, see what had to be unmounted, and now we can go reboot, so it's going to all reboot, I'm going to press F12, we're going to select one for hard disk, and welcome to grub, and here we go. We are booting into our successful Gen 2 installation. And if you've gotten this far, congratulations. If you've got to rebooting, congratulations. You have made it to having an installation. And we have the nice thing, Tux login. Root password is what I said to me. And there we go. We have it. So let's do ping dash C3 www.google.com. And we have internet access. So if you've made it to this point of the tutorial and you've rebooted and you got a Grub logo and you've booted back into your Gen 2, congratulations. You have successfully installed Gen 2 Linux. And I hope this really has helped you if you have. 
Now, if you haven't, if you had some issues, please feel free to let me know in the comments section below. But we're not done yet. We've finished the installation, but now it's time to get everything else we need to make this installation be a real working desktop. That means we need X server, a bunch more things. So in the next part, I'm going to show you right now how to get hardware 3D acceleration drivers or support for your kernel for your specific uh, graphics card. So what you're going to run is cd slash user slash src slash linux. That's step one. And we're going to do make menu config. And that's going to run that. And we'll be greeted with this. This is the um, menu when you're uh, basically telling your graphics card what to uh, run and things like that. So uh, we have virtualization and different things like that. So KVM support. There's a bunch of different things in here that you can enable if you need it to specifically have a driver enabled for your specific hardware. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to process types and so processor types and features right here press enter on that then we're going to go to we're going to make sure mtrr is has a little asterisk so we'll find mtrr so mtrr has the support it needs it has a little asterisk there that's good we're also going to go to device drivers so now we're back in the main menu we're going to go to device drivers graphics support graphic support and then you're going to enable kind of what graphics card you have if you do have if you have ATI Radeon you're going to press you're going to make that not modular by pressing space and that will turn on the AMD cards you can enable Naovo drivers for Nvidia 90% of the time you're going to go in here and you're going to uncheck like Nuovo, AMD, if you have an Intel, if you have an NVIDIA card at least, you'll uncheck, I think, most of these, 90% of these, uh, except for some Intel things. Uh, but you can even uncheck these as well, because this is just modular support. Like the Linux kernel, very modular, you're able to uh, have, you're able to, like, like for my, for a Linux installation, especially with a, a very generic kernel, you can throw this at any type of system, and then the default drivers will load up. But if you're trying to do NVIDIA drivers, the actual real proprietary uh, NVIDIA drivers, you're going to uncheck Nuovo. If you're going to be using Radeon, you're most likely going to be enabling Radeon. For me, it's only going to become modular because it knows I don't have an, uh, an 88 Radeon card. Because I'm on a virtual box, it can't detect what card I have. So I'll just leave everything unchecked because I'm using... So for me, I'm just going to leave Nuovo checked. So we'll exit, exit, and I'm going to save. I'm going to call this default kernel. Well, I'll call it default.config. Easy enough to remember. Exit. Great. So once I've saved the changes I've made, I can exit. Then I can type in make and and make modules underscore install now what this will do is it's going to regenerate our kernel I find this way very easy like I've said it before I think is that in the beginning we use gen kernel to configure our system which gives us a very nice generic kernel very easy to use not a lot of hassle to set up it gives us most of the default things to make your system up and running but now later on now we're resetting it up for our graphics card so here is where we would choose like I said either if you have Nvidia or AMD it's hard for me to show that because I'm not on a real machine I'm on VirtualBox so for me I just let Nuovo stay checked but if I was going to use Nvidia drivers the proprietary Nvidia drivers like I do on my real machine on my main computer then I would uncheck everything, including ATI, Radeon, NVIDIA, uh, the Nuovo drivers, so Nuovo and the NVIDIA proprietary drivers are not in conflict. So that's a big thing. Drivers that are open source and proprietary will be in conflict with each other. You can't have two drivers on the same machine. 
So now that we have drivers specified, we can continue on with the installation of Cinnamon. I went into make.config and I fixed a few things. Number one, I spelled cards wrong because I'm a genius. So video cards equals virtual box. I had video cars equals virtual box. So that's one thing. I also added input devices equals EDEV, E V D E V. Now I'm not sure if the normal user has to put this. I don't I didn't do this for my normal install on my actual machine, but for VirtualBox you might need this line. So after you do that, if you edit that and you save those changes, the next thing I did was I emerged Xorg server. And after I did that, it took a couple minutes. That didn't take it long at all. Then after that I did XOR X term. I emerged X term. And then after you do that, you can start X. And here we go. Now we have a default little X term desktop, which is at least half of the battle to get X, X, um, X started. So we have, at least we know that we have X server, and that also means we can um, create our XINITRC file. So we'll exit out of this, and we'll clear this out, and we'll create that file right now. So what we'll do is nano tilde slash dot x i n i t r c and in here we will set x term just for now just so we get the x term window so if we start x we only get one little window and our cursor not those multiple windows because now we have a configuration file so great we'll uh, just exit out of this and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be emerging cinnamon because all right i may have said previously in this tutorial we're going to be doing gnome and I, I tried. I really did try to do GNOME in this. I, I have a lot of the commands before this were attempting to uh, download uh, GNOME with all its packages. And for some reason, it fails. And that's my cat uh, trying to type. But for some reason, it just fails. It really can't. I tried to do a download. It didn't emerge properly. And most likely, it's because I'm on a virtual box. And virtual box is a little bit wonky when it comes to graphics drivers. We're going to get everything set up for having cinnamon so we have xorg and we're going to just emerge some packages required to have cinnamon so we're going to do emerge ask x11 dash libs slash gtk plus extra okay that's step one uh yes and now out of 1 out of 22 packages, we're going to be emerging this. This is stuff that will help us get to use Cinnamon. There are also some use commands we're going to have to fill out when we're emerging Cinnamon, which we're going to be uh, putting the use flags for Network Manager and LF, NLS. So right before we go and emerge Cinnamon, I'm going to show you the use variables I'm using for this emerge to be successful. So in your use variable, you have to set X. Bind us, get network manager is important, NLS, pulse audio, ICU, GNOME keyring, OpenGL, and even JPEG if you want JPEG support. Now this is just a sample of use variables you can use, and I'll get into use variables more off in another video. But I recommend that you please go on the Gen2 wiki and the Gen2 handbook and look at use variables for your programs. So if you want to emerge other programs, it's very simple to find the use variable you need to add in here and just play around with kind of the syntax of what Portage uses to make installation installing packages successful. Sometimes when you install a package, you'll get the, um, it won't install, it'll say there are some config files that need updating. If you need to update config files, you'll run etc-update, and that will update configuration files. That's if like it exits out of an installation and says 10 config files need updating. You'll run that command, then re-emerge, emerge again, run the same command again, and it will then continue the installation. Things like that. You have to play around with emerging and the portage syntax of installing. So now that we've done this, now we can go and emerge the Cinnamon desktop. So now that we've successfully emerged those extra packages and programs, we're going to now emerge Cinnamon. So we're going to type in emerge ask gnome dash extra slash Cinnamon. And now we will emerge Cinnamon. So we will type in yes and this will emerge Cinnamon. I'll be back once this is finished emerging. So once Cinnamon has officially finished emerging, we're going to type the following commands to get our system configuration up. So the first command you're going to be writing is rc update and debus default. 
That's the first command that's going to make Dbus default and boot on launch. Then we're going to do RC update add console kit default. That's the second one. Then we're going to do RC service Dbus start. We'll start it on, on, we'll start it now so we don't have to reboot the system. We'll do the same for console kit RC service console kit start. So then we're going to type in RC service dot oh, net dot our interface name stop. So we'll run IP link to get the name of our our network interface, and then you'll put it there instead of ENP 0 S3. That's my interface. You have to put your own. We're going to stop that one. We're going to also delete it out of the defaults so we don't have it anymore. Then we're going to start Network Manager because Network Manager was in the use variables we just showed before we emerged Cinnamon. So we're going to do RC service Network Manager start. Once you do that, we're going to also run the command RC update add network manager default so it loads every time we turn the machine on. And after that, we can edit our slash dot nano slash dot ex, well, xinitrc, and we'll add inside this exec cinnamon session. And once we have this in, we can write this to the file and then we can type in start x. And once we type in start X, we'll be greeted with the Cinnamon desktop. So if you've made it to this point, you have successfully installed Gentoo Linux with a desktop environment. Now, you don't stop here. There's going to be more videos to come a little later after the installation guide. I am going to rest after this big process we undertook here. But I'm going to also get some other things together in a better way to show you, probably on my actual Gentoo installation, on emerging different programs and things like that, and showing you how to get general software you'll need to make your Gentoo installation beautiful. I hope you enjoyed the Gentoo installation guide. As always, my name is Antun Sueras. Please rate, like, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.